All right, everybody, welcome to a new road reflection. Your host, Chris Mohan. We're uh, we're we're get, we're this is our first Philosophy Friday, folks, because uh, everybody everybody loves a good uh, good pe- good piece of alliteration. Uh, so I so I decided to 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 go with a piece of alliteration there. Um, so uh, yeah, and before we get into it, let's let's do our our a quick check in. Um, I am feeling significantly better, um, and uh, like I mentioned yesterday, I do. I think I need to like switch around. Um, the way that I've uh, decided to handle my schedules is um, try to do more of the physically active stuff early, um, and kind of get my mind right, quiet, quiet my mind down a little bit. Because sometimes I, there's just a lot going on in my head all the time. So. Um, that's something I think I'm going to start implementing uh, soon. But even yesterday, since I like got a chance to do ac- like some sort of exercise yesterday, um, you know, I have felt significantly better. Uh, and I think it's just, yeah, I got I got into a, a weird headspace a, at the start of the week, and uh, you know, it took me a little while to get get the hell out of it (laughs) to say to say the least um so i am feeling um a lot better a lot more energized about um you know the looking ahead on um things to come on a on a personal level uh on a on a governmental level uh not so much you guys not so much (laughs) If you paid attention to the videos that I have put out throughout the week, specifically covering this economic stimulus um, stuff going on with the with the election and everything, uh, it, the 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 situation is grim, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but I think uh, what does give me uh, you know hope and motivation and strength and stuff is uh, is us is each other. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, work on this video, work on getting it up, um, you know, grab a little bite to eat, chat with you guys while these while this video is up and, and try to get, get outside and go for a walk before it becomes too late, before it becomes a little too chilly out there for me to, um, to actually be able to take a walk and stuff, uh, just to get my blood flowing a little bit, just to get my body moving a little bit and, and give, my, give my brain a little... Uh, a uh, little bit of like time to 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 decompress it and and uh, you know focus on one thing at a time. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to 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 seeing that stuff. Um, and I'm also uh, I'm, I'm going to talk to uh, um, a friend of mine, uh, you know, about some of these online live shows that people are doing. Um, there's a couple ideas floating around, so. There, there might be an opportunity there if I can figure out how to coordinate it properly. Uh, yeah, so, so I, might, I might see what other people are doing and, and see if, if, if we can use this idea on a, on a grander scale. Um, so, you know, there, there might be some opportunities coming up in, in terms of uh, me doing some kind of stand-up-y type thing let's let's call it that (laughs) um so uh yeah i i uh i'm i'm hoping for the best in regards to that um so let's get into this philosophy friday situation we got going on here uh so i'm excited about this because i've i've been thinking about this quite a bit for uh for a while for you know uh it this this is and if you're familiar with my stand-up, I think I address a lot of this stuff. Like, one of the closers, I think the closer to approaching happiness was specifically about this topic. Uh, so if uh, if you haven't seen that bit um, or heard it or, or anything like that, then then you should uh, you should you should you should go you should go download that album, you guys. It's a, it's currently available as a pay what you want uh, on the Bandcamp page. Um, so yeah, you should go check that out if you would like to. And it's, you know, it's pay what you want to pretty much free. Um, so we're going to dig into 
uh, ego and arrogance and um, how fame kind of plays into into these two things. Um, and, uh, you know, I got my notes. That's that's the concentration of, of the topics at hand right now. So I think in order to um, really talk about this, we have to talk about um, all three aspects of the mind because the ego is a, a, a aspect of our mind. So let's let's do some definitions to, to, to start, right? Let's talk about some definitions. Uh, so we'll start with the id. The id is the, the start of this. The id is the unconscious, the unconscious and the instinct, right? The, the way Merriam-Webster has described it is one of the three divisions of the psyche in psychoanalytic theory that completely uh, that is completely unconscious and is the source of psychic energy derived from instinctual needs and drives. So that's the id. That's our unconscious mind, right? It's it's the part of our mind that that, that we don't think about. It's, it's like the fight or flight responses that we have. It's you know the part of the mind that lets you know that you should eat something. It's the part of the mind that uh, probably is also where um, some of our unconscious like trauma is stored, and uh, you know ha- it eventually comes out and and. Um, floods into into our our ego, which we'll, we'll, we're going to get to that in um in just a second. But the second part is the super ego. Um, the super ego is the uh, semi conscious. This is where um, some of our moral judgments are. This is where some of you know our core principles and stuff are. So um, Merriam Webster defines this as uh, one of the three divisions of psych of the psyche in psychoanalytic theory that is only partly conscious represents the internalization of parental conscience and the rules of society and the functions to reward and punish through a system of moral attitudes, conscience, and a sense of guilt. So this is, um, this is that development of morality uh, that that we see, right? The right or wrong, the, the, the punishment, like why do we need to do what's right or wrong? Is there some punishment behind it? Is there some reward behind it? Is it altruistic? Is it something different? Um, so this is, this is the, that part of it. Um, and then finally we get to the ego, which is, which is the realized self and how, the sen- uh, how, how your sense of self interacts with the world around you interacts with this with this reality around us right that's that's what the ego is so so let's look at the way that Miriam Webster has defined ego uh, which is the self um, is, uh, as contrasted with another self or the world um, and the other definition is uh, the one of three divisions of the psyche in psychoanalytic theory that serves as the organized conscious mediator between the person and reality, especially by functioning both in the perception and adaptation to reality. So it's it's just our sense of self. That's what the ego is. It's it's the most realized version of ourself. So so this aspect of this is is um, it's the most realized version of ourself. So egotism um, is described as uh, the excessive use of the first person singular personal pronoun, the practice about talking about oneself too much an exaggerated sense of self-importance. So when, you know, when the ego becomes too much, that's egotism. Um, And by definition, by definition of what this is, none of these three uh, portions of the psyche are bad because they all kind of contribute to us, who we are as people, right? Like, so, so saying that one is bad is um doesn't doesn't particularly make sense because then it takes an aspect of who you are and how we interact with the world and how we interact with each other uh how we can be individuals as part of a collective um it it removes that aspect of it and and it also takes away a sense of understanding uh that we have about ourselves as well so inherently these are not negative things but it's important to understand them um how they how they act individually and how they correspond in tandem to each other right um because all three of them kind of have to work in synchronous in order to create this in our sense of the world and our sense of ourselves and how we fit and how we define it where our purpose comes from all these big answers all these big questions that we ask to ourselves um 
comes from this, from all three of them working in tandem with each other. I had an experience where, uh, you know, I, I, I think it took me a long time to realize it and I haven't fully been able to um, talk about this story on stage to, because it, it, it took me a while to figure out where some of this stuff is coming from and how to, how to make it funny, right? So um, in 2018, I was attacked by a rooster in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, some of you that have come to see my live stand-up comedy show probably have uh, seen me talk about this before. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, this this rooster just came up and tried to peck at my feet when I was trying to get clothes out of my car, and I kind of freaked out and had a panic attack and tried to like kick it, but I just bailed. I fucking ran, um, and my now ex-wife had to go out and like get clothes out of the car for me, and then like we she couldn't figure out why I was having such like a intense panic result um, reaction to to this to this bird, right? Which roosters are, by the way, just fucking mean birds. That's all they are. They're just kind of like mean, dickish birds. Uh, they're 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 basically like they're 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 basically like the bird equivalent of everybody that peaked in high school. That's that's what roosters are, right? Um, they the 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 term cocky uh, exists for a reason. The way that it exists because of I think probably because of the rooster. Um, but they carry themselves in this air of 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 arrogance and eat like they think they're the shit. They think they're the best and they think they need like their whole sole purpose is to fertilize eggs and just be like, I got to protect these fucking chickens. And it's like, I don't think you do. I think everything's going to be fine. Eventually, everybody will be eaten uh, and return back to the earth from whence they came. Um, but I couldn't figure out what this visceral um reaction to this rooster was all about and that's probably coming from um from my unconscious right from my id that made me realize something about myself um all th and and something from the super ego because i could have uh i could have kicked the shit out of this bird for sure right like i could have kicked it in the face I could have gone back. I, I could have. I could have taken that sense of panic and grabbed a broom and ran out there and fucking swatted it down with a broom or a stick or or whatever it was or or a tennis racket, right? But my sense of morality and my semi-conscious thing was like, I don't want to hurt this bird. Um, and two, I'm pretty sure that this bird 100% wants to hurt me, and I don't fully understand why. <laughs> Uh, because I'm just trying to get clothes out of my fucking car. Uh, and I think that, that I don't come from like the unconscious level of my mind is that I, I don't come from a people, uh, that had a fight response, if that makes any sense. Right? Like I'm not like a fight kind of person. Uh, I think I think the the ancestry that I have probably come from uh, are people that have survived because, you know, they they saw the giant bird running at them and they were like, not going to stick around for this. And then they fucking bolted, you know, like I think that's that's where that comes from. So realizing that that's that's the sense of who I am. I'm not really looking to hurt anything. I don't I don't have that instinct in me. Um made me realize who I was as a person, you know, that I think, um, I am driven more by, um, a sense of compassion, a sense of understanding something else, a sense of curiosity is like, my challenge would be, how do I communicate to a fucking rooster that wants to possibly peck my eyes out, uh, that all I'm doing is trying to get clothes out of a car. How do I how do I communicate that to this creature? I don't know. I have no idea, um, but I think that that gives me a little bit of a, a higher state uh, to be in. And in order to reach this higher state of consciousness or or higher brain function, we do have to have all these three things work in tandem with each other um, to create this level of the ever evolving mind, right? Because your unconscious is going to affect your sense of self like we talked we talked about trauma a few minutes ago um you know something that something 
some kind of trauma that you might have experienced is going to probably end up remaining in your unconscious and it'll eventually flood its way into your ego into that conscious mind and it's going to create a sense of morality that remains in your super ego so the way that you perceive reality the way that you interact with the world is going to come from that so so what if you only pay attention to your ego which will end up acting as a defense then you can't get past that trauma you can't evolve past it right you can't evolve past, beyond these experiences that you solely define yourself by so in so all three things have to work in tandem with each other we have to have an understanding of where um where certain things are coming from, how each aspect of your psyche is really playing into your sense of self, your identity, your interaction with the world. Uh, because there is no stillness in the universe. So realistically, us being a part of the universe, there is no stillness in our mind. Our mind, our psyche, our identity, our beliefs, they're constantly evolving, they're constantly shifting, and they're constantly changing based on all the experiences that we take um, take in and, and um put out for the world so you know so if if individually these ideas are not problematic um if individually we need these things to to figure out uh you know what reality is and and our sense of purpose and our identities and all that um, why, why do people claim that ego is the problem, right? I, I, I've even claimed that ego is a problem. Moreover, I guess the question is, how does ego become um, egotism? How do we get to that point, right? And I think, it, and, and I think that it, it relies in, um, in excess. When, when we solely give our ego... Um, a point of purpose, you know, I think that's where the problem starts. When it's this excessive defining of yourself through your ego, through this realized self, like you get to this point and you go, this is who I am, take it or leave it, you know, fuck you for not liking me for who I am kind of thing where sometimes maybe who you are you know, it, it, it isn't, isn't particularly going to gel with the world around you, isn't going to particularly gel with your friends or, or the job that you want or the type of thing that you're pursuing, the, the passion that you're pursuing or anything. And, and this, this sense of self that you have built, this realized self that you have might not work well with that. And if you say, well, fuck everything else, um, you're not going to evolve as a person. The, the singular focus of who you are becomes that ego. It's, it's who I am is important and everything has to bend around it rather than you having a little bit of flexibility. And once you bend a little bit, the other thing is going to bend as well. And it's just give or take that happens. Um, so where, where these notions come from, I think, is when you face challenges to your sense of self, um, and you kind of have this lock on, on this sense of self when, and you're defining yourself through this ego without really giving any, any, uh, any inch around to it. Um, the id then takes over as a fight response, uh, on behalf of the ego. And then, you know, it becomes like, a uh, a, 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 a sense of self-defense really. Um, where where you think you have to fight to like keep your sense of self alive because if anything changes it all crumbles and you have nothing left which is not true um now this is probably what ends up becoming perceived as arrogance it's this notion that you and only you are correct um and really what this defines it down to is that the that excessive ego this egotism is just you closing your mind, right? Is you being closed-minded. Uh, this sense of self-preservation that you have that 
anything different, anything that challenges the way that you perceive the world now or the way that, um, you know, you interact with the reality around you, the way that that your ego says that what you are and how your realized self is the best. And if something comes into contradiction and says, aha, but perhaps you're not is fucking terrible and it, and has to be demand- like that's that's that arrogance so people push back that's the hubris too is is to say that you know it it has to be me it, I, i'm the best so i have to figure it out i mean we see this all the time especially in uh, america which is where i am and you know i've i've seen it all my life growing up in the states i'm not from the states i'm i'm an indian immigrant you know i, I have my citizenship now and um but even then it's like what does that mean really um but i've seen this hubris that is kind of developed in this country and i think it really like that hubris really comes from how this country was formed uh where the history of this country really comes from having to fight to gain your individuality to gain that realized self that self-determination that is the core key of all things, you know, freedom and American exceptionalism and stuff. And, you know, it, that, that trauma of, that historic trauma that I think as a country America faces is, is very interesting because they were in, in fact, you know, held down by a higher power, by, by this, by this force that they didn't know how to fight back. And then they did fight back and, and they decided that they were going to go down this route of self-determination, you know, and, and continue to make the same mistakes themselves. You know, like that's we, we continue to make the same mistakes as every other empire. But we believe that the, the mistakes that we make are not mistakes. The, the, the way that we're going about doing things are not, you know, wrong at all. So we keep doing them over and over again. That's why history repeats itself. I think history repeats itself because of the excessive ego that is in humanity that is in these positions of power itself. Um, you know, that the, 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 there are people that just can't admit that they have done something wrong, that, that their way of thinking might not have particularly been the right way of thinking. And once we get to that point, that's when we start seeing true change and true progress, right? I mean, if, if you're going to keep coming out and saying that you're the best and you're correct all of the time, there's no room for curiosity, there's no room for knowledge, there's no room for critical thought. And I would go so far as to say that I don't think there's really room for progress there either. Um, because you have now decided that anything that contradicts your line of thinking, um, that, that contradicts your way of being and your economic structure, whatever it is, is wrong and needs to be demonized. We see this in, in the way that America behaves towards anything that's different, right, all the time. We see this in the way that we vote. We see this in the way that we run our economy, right? We see this in the way that uh, we interact with the rest of the globe, with all of the other countries out there. That's part of, I think that's part of the reason why people don't like Trump as much is because Trump represents the the true hubris and the true ego of the country this is a guy that's i don't believe fully understands the scope of you know the ge- geopolitics that he has he has um uh, been handed i don't think he fully understands nor does he care about the responsibility that's been put into place with him um, what i think he wants is adoration and uh and love and all that kind of shit but the, that's part of the reason is, is seeing that as, as, as the forefront of the leadership, I think, is, is the reason why people don't like him because that's how America has behaved, whether you're a Democrat or Republican or whatever. We have, people have behaved with this, this overwhelming sense of hubris for a very long time. And... Uh, and I think seeing a, a representation of that constantly being put in your face um, kind of scares people. And, you know, they, they are pushing back against that representation because their ego won't let them accept that they're actually egotistic. 
Um, so if we can accept that we have been egotistic, that, that American exceptionalism and hubris has, has led this country down, uh, a path that isn't very good, doesn't that mean that perhaps there's a different model, there's a different thing that we can do, perhaps that means that there might be a, somebody better that we, we have to choose instead of choosing the same thing. And and now let's flip that over to someone like Joe Biden, um, who there are a bunch of people that support Joe Biden. There's a bunch of people that, that hated Joe Biden, that spoke out against him, that spoke out against his sexual assault allegations, um, that, you know, that said that what, what his sexual allegations, sexual assault allegations mean that he shouldn't be running for president, um, that spoke out against his crime bill that put a bunch of black people in prison, that spoke out against his vice presidentship with uh, Barack Obama. All of those people are now like, I guess I got to vote for this guy because he's different than the what I've defined as the human, you know, um, human face of ego that is Donald Trump. When in reality, Joe Biden is exactly that. He is also just a, you know, a human image of ego. Uh, just he just wears a different color tie and has a different letter de- uh, denomination by his name. You know, Joe Biden has done is 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 guilty of virtually almost all of the same crimes as um, as Donald Trump. And because we don't want to face our own ego, because that that would mean that we have to make a fundamental shift um, and evolve virtually the way that we have been living our lives people will people will ignore those facts people will not look at it and the ego that america has is kind of complicated in and of itself like america's ego says that it's the greatest country in the whole world but americans tout themselves to to be dumb and fat and you know all this all these negative things but they kind of champion this, right? They like champion the anti-intellectualism. Like it's seen as something great. Like I see so many fucking comedians go up and play the dumb guy because that's what that's what they believe that audiences want is is somebody dumb. That's somebody that's not going to think critically or challenge them or something. Like I see so many very intelligent comics play that not satirically. Um, and and there is this championing this this sort of worship of anti-intellectualism and just being in pure excess because that represents pure freedom. Um, Because if we do anything that goes against this notion of pure freedom, then we are falling right back into the traps of, you know, of um, uh, British imperialism, of, of the oligarchy taking over. And because of that fear, we just, we just gave oligarchy and, uh, plutocracy and kleptocracy and and you know the the notions of imperialism we 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 gave into those things again just under the guise of uh pure freedom through anti intellectual like if you think this way then you don't have freedom if you have logic if if you if if you impede if you don't do whatever you want if you don't say whatever you want because you constitutionally have the right to if you don't do, then that's, oh my goodness, that's going right back to 1774 when we were fucking guerrilla warfare, you know, where we had to throw, fucking throw some tea off the harbor. This, this pure freedom notion though, um, goes into this argument of true self versus false self that, that some, some folks have talked about, um, some, some psychologists and stuff have talked about. Um, so, the truest of the true self comes from when you're a child, right? When you're a child, you you kind of have this, you're, you're just unencumbered in your emotions and your desires. Um, you know, like you want to feel everything, you want to do everything, you want to express everything all at once, all at the same time, because that because you're just this raw kind of unfiltered thing that doesn't have life experience that doesn't have a moral code developed yet 
you know, you, you haven't figured out what this world is and how to interact with it that is comfortable to you. So you're just completely un uh, unencumbered, right? You, you, you're going to cry. You're going to poop wherever you want. You're, you're, you're going to, you know, eat whatever you want to do, you know, like you're going to suckle on, suckle on it, the, the, the proverbial teat, uh, whenever you feel like you need to do it. <laughs> and that's, and that's what children do. They're kind of on, because they don't know, they don't have the super ego developed yet, right? They just have the id and the id tells them that they have these needs and they have these emotions that need to be expressed without really understanding what those emotions are, where they come from, and how to express them. That's where the super ego comes in, and then that's when the, the ego puts it into context of how we interact with the reality around us, right? But, but that's all working in tandem with each other. So part of this theory is that when parents kind of course correct the child it creates th this this false self um, because what you're supposed to do is is kind of just let them do it and let them see what this unencumbered uninhibited um, freedom of emotion freedom of expression you know without any sort of restraint can really do um, and it can be overwhelming not just for yourself but for other people around you for the, the nature of the universe itself, it can be <laughs> overwhelming. Um, so creating restraint for yourself as, as a moral code to say, okay, there is a lot of anger brewing inside of me. Let's explore why that's happening. Um, you can help a child develop that sense on, the, on their own, um, you know, by letting this excessive behavior kind of run its course is is a theory uh i don't know if that's correct or wrong but uh, you know i haven't i haven't really seen it uh happen a whole lot um but the false self is created out of you know the the restraint set by other people's rules rather than developing um developing sort of rules for yourself um you know so uh then mistakes goats and evolution they can happen to children and when we're given this excessive freedom to be unencumbered, to it, it helps us then learn about the world around us. It helps us learn who we are in it and how we'd like to interact with it, right? And we start to, and then we start looking at what our instinct is, why our instinct exists, how it fits into this moral code that we have developed through experience, age. Um, interaction with other people and then leans into into you know the sense of self that we have um, what it would help us learn possibly in theory if this was the way we went about it what it would help us learn is that uh, just because we have the freedom to do something or to express something or to say something doesn't mean we should do it it would give us the freedom of restraint which is a higher consciousness because that's a self self choice that we're making restraint is 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 a choice that we're we're making for ourselves right um it's uh how do i i mean I'm trying to think of how to exactly put it it's like if you see somebody that you're attracted to, like knowing that just taking your pants off and running towards them completely naked is that's not the way to court somebody, Joe Biden. Uh, that's just not <laughs> the way that you're supposed to do that. Right. Like it's. Um, it's weird. Uh, it can be threatening. They might not want something like that. They might not be attracted to you. Um, that's not the way that they feel attraction, um, you know, and just because, yes, you have the freedom to do that, right? You have the freedom to, to, to just run naked towards somebody, but don't do it because your id should be like, that sounds great. That sounds exactly what we need to do. And it's like, wait a minute, but where is that coming from? Why do we feel the, the, do we just like being naked? Is that what it is? 
Maybe other people don't like us being naked. Maybe we'll be naked on our own time, but maybe we should go talk to this other person before they also want to be naked with you and see what they're all about, you know, instead of making that choice for them. And, you know, reaching this higher level of consciousness where you're just, where, where we're not just a bunch of uh, naked primates running at each other all the time, you know, maybe we should <laughs> get to that higher level of consciousness. Understanding when nudity is appropriate. That's, that's the higher level of conscious. That's the freedom of restraint that we can get to, you know. Um, and there's, there's different ways to do that. Right now, I think it's a, it's a lot harder to achieve that by ourselves because of the social programming that's, that has been put into place by society and society's rules. Because of that social programming that's been put into place by society's rules, it's very difficult for us to undo it by ourselves. But there are things that we have invented and that occur naturally in our surroundings that we can totally utilize, right? Uh, MDMA, for example. MDMA is an egolytic drug. It dissolves our ego. It dissolves the sense of self that we have to try to connect us to something bigger, try to get us to understand what's going on around us through a different lens, through a different perspective, so that when we come back to our ego, we have a different realization and we can, we can try to ascertain a higher level of consciousness that we can all, you know, evolve with. Um, so, you know, that's why those drugs are important. But this pure egotistic way of looking at things, this pure ego that we might have, it leads to vanity, self-centeredness, selfishness, um, which in reality is quite antithetical to, um, to our nature. It's actually very antithetical to our nature. When all three parts are working together, when all three parts are working in tandem with each other, and we have an understanding of where certain unconscious thoughts are coming from, how they developed our morality to make the sense of self that we, uh, and, and how we interact with the world around us, uh, really, most of our actions then lead to moral goodness, compassion, kindness, and cooperation. It's really what it all boils down to. Um, when all three parts of our psyche are working in tandem with each other with understanding, uh, to, to give us a more clear understanding of ourselves um, and our individualism in the collective, we want to be more cooperative with each other. We're social animals, right? We, we kind of need each other. And when you look at the world only through the sense of ego, you, you forget all that. Um, but what we've discovered is that most human beings want to be good. They want to cooperate with each other. They want to be compassionate with each other. And really what prevents that is by saying, no, 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 don't do that. Think only about yourself. Think only about what you need. Think only about what you have to do. Think only about what your purpose is and go out and achieve that regardless of all these other people. Um, and, you know, that's, that's kind of what theology and evolutionary biology has told us is the, is, is the, 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 the natural state of human nature and trying to do anything against that um, kind of goes against it kind of is, is friction to, to this natural course of things. Um, even though there's evidence to provide, uh, you know, contrary to, to that belief is, it, you know, there, there's a lot of evidence that, that there's like a heart, there was a Harvard study that was done that pr pretty much proved that. It pretty much proved that we are a lot more compassionate uh, creature than we would like to give ourselves credit for. Right. And, and theology and it works in that sense, too, is that's why theology um, does it. It's not just the philosophy of, of trying to understand and connect us to something bigger and larger uh, than ourselves, because the universe is much bigger and larger th than ourselves. And we, we try to ascertain some kind of meaning to the universe by, you know, giving labels such as God and all this sort of stuff. But um, theology works in terms of punishment and ritual 
And part of that is because the punishments exist because theology believes that we are not particularly uh, good. <laughs> like that's not that's not within our nature, uh, and that's false. There was a, that that Harvard study that just happened is basically that is basically that's what it says is that more times than not, actually an overwhelming amount of uh, uh, more times. Um, we will do the morally good thing. We will do something to help another person out. We will do something to take care of somebody else, um, you know, and, and you know, cooperate with each other uh, than, than we will. Now, what corrupts these ideas is money and power. The more money and power somebody is given, um, it corrupts this idea. It gives the self far more importance. So, so when, when power and finances are allocated to, to an individual, um, and this is sort of where fame comes in as well, is um, we kind of lean into the ego. We kind of lean into that self-importance, that vanity, that self-centeredness, and um, we drift away from cooperation. And that's part of the reason why, why the, this fame aspect comes in, right, is, is you look at people like Biden and Trump and basically anybody that's, that's got this hyper level of fame i think um there are some outliers in this situation but most people that reach this higher level of fame are kind of driven through the self-importance so even what they say doesn't really have an altruistic cooperative compassionate point of view it kind of has this well this will make me look good kind of thing um and it's not this genuine uh level of compassion and understanding um and I mean, you know, I, I've, for, for me personally, I have no desire to be famous. Um, I would like to, I've, I've said this several times is like my goal in, in terms of touring, uh, is, uh, 30 to 50 max in, in you know, I, I don't want to play these giant arenas. I don't want to play these stadiums or I want to play these little, mom and pop joints these intimate rooms and be able to to fill them because one that means that um i can connect with people i can actually have a, a a good meaningful conversation and get to know some people and and not just expand my horizons but hopefully expand theirs in um in 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 a you know exchange um to whoever is opening for me if if we're charging anywhere between five and fifteen bucks for tickets, depending on where we are and what the situation is, now I can pay the opener um, or openers and still be able to make a living to take care of my bills and my expenses, right? And like actually make an income. Um, and three, the venue that I'm uh, working with, uh, they get. Uh, financially steady um in that sense so so it's about creating a partnership it's about doing so, so to me 30 to 50 is perfect in order to do that um if i can do that every single time in every single city that i go to i'm good that i don't i don't really want people to think that i'm um the most important voice in in whatever i'm saying i could be wrong i mean some of the stuff i'm sure some people have disagreements with and i hope that we can have a um, a mutual civil discourse about what you disagree with and what what you know I, why you disagree with it and what information you have that I didn't cover about uh, about this kind of a subject. But that's because that's part of me dissolving my ego and understanding that there is more to this world around me than <laughs> than just my sense of self and what I know. I also don't like the notion that um, I was just talking to a friend about this is is that we know nothing because we do know some things you know your your sense of reality that the facts and truths and information that we have acquired up to this moment is that something and we can hold on to that and that that makes up the sense of ourselves that that informs the id that informs the super ego and informs our ego to make up who we are um, and how we interact with the world around us so that is that is something that is something that's very important so i don't like this notion that we know nothing we don't know everything and what we know is subject to change, and we have to be open to that change. We have to be open to a, a different understanding um, and a different, you know, viewpoint or perspective. And that's our nature, though. Our nature is to be that. 
our nature is to be compassionate and understanding to each other is to look at somebody else's experience and go perhaps i can learn something from what this other person went through not i don't give a shit because i didn't go through it that's actually antithetical to our nature so our view into theology and evolutionary biology seems to be false it, it, you know it seems to not be accurate in the way that we behave perhaps but it all comes from dissolving that sense of ego dissolving that sense that that me and me alone has all the answers and if you know somebody doesn't want to listen to me and uh, then they can go fuck themselves and I hate them that that doesn't do us any good that's quite antithetical to uh, to our cerebral in, uh, evolution. If we want to evolve as a species, I think we need to get better at that. We need to get better at, uh, at understanding each other. The scope of experience does not end with you. Cool. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I kind of, I, I had a lot more fun. It's the, 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 these were going to get weird. They're probably not going to be as funny as the other stuff because these are, these are more of just kind of thoughts that I collect and put together based on information that I've learned about some of these theories. Um, and like I said, they'll grow and evolve. And I, and I kind of think that's like the, a, a really good way of starting off these philosophy Fridays, uh, that I would like to do a whole lot more of, um, I don't know what next week is going to be about. <laughs> I have not decided. So if you have any ideas, uh, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, feel free to, to, to say something in the chat. I will be, I will be there monitoring um, all these chats, all the premieres. That's what they are. They, I pre-record these videos and then upload them um, and then hang out with you guys in the chats to, to you know, chat with you guys about w what, what's being said and what your thoughts are and things of that, things of that sort. Um, and these are these are longer, so I hope you guys have some patience that eventually I will get to the point that you're probably trying to make, and maybe we'll have the same thoughts, maybe we'll have different thoughts, I don't know. Uh, but I hope you guys are patient about it. <laughs> um, and as always, uh, please share this if you enjoyed the content that uh, that uh, you know we're 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 putting out there. Um, if you if you like this video, uh, give it a like, give it a share, tell some folks about it. I'm putting up these videos every day. Um, especially during the, during the old quarantine. Uh, and uh, if, if you have the means to financially help um, these videos, because I would like to have a little bit more production quality to them and with maybe some images and um, I don't know, some, some, something, something along those lines. Uh, that, that, that would be cool. I would, I would like to have, I would like to add those in there. Um, it's just a matter of time and commitment and the, yeah. So, but I, w I would like to have a lot, m a little bit more production quality associated with it. Um, so if you have the means to donate, I know we're all kind of in a, in a pretty tough time and, and there's a, a, a bajillion people that are uh, struggling through it. Um, but if this content is something that you would like to support, you can do so. Uh, by going to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. Uh, there you will find various ways to either become a sustaining member or make a one-time donation. Um, another way that you can also help is by downloading my album. Um, Pandora playlists help a shit ton, whether you, believe it or not. Uh, if you make a playlist on Pandora, um, it, it, it financially benefits artists a whole lot more than Spotify does. Um, so, so there's that. Uh, so again, all of my, all of my stuff is available on my website. That's the easiest way to find all of my videos, um, keep up to date with everything. And if you subscribe to the website, I think it subscribes you to my email list as well. Um, but that's another way to keep up to date on everything is, is the email list. Um, there's a weekly and a monthly version. Uh, so once again, ramennoodlescomedy.com, R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. And uh, uh, tomorrow is storytelling Saturday, so I'm gonna. I'm, that's just gonna be kind of a, a looser, raw storytelling of uh, you know a series that I've that I started years ago uh, on my email list called Stories from the Road, and this will kind of be a version of that. So some of these stories I've told on stage before, some of these stories I have not. 
Um, eventually, I think they might wind up being sort of like a studio-esque album of some sort. Uh, that is something that I have been kicking around in my head. Um, perhaps this will be the moment that I start writing these stories in a concrete performance level format. Uh, but I have a bunch of these stories that I would like to, to tell and, um, you know, um, so, so that's what Saturdays are going to be. They're going to be kind of looser to tell these stories. And I do, I, I know what I'm going to tell tomorrow. Uh, the story that I want to tell it, it's, uh, it's a fun one. It's an entertaining one. I think, uh, it, I've, I've just had a real shit time in my life. <laughs> Um, so, and then Sunday we go live, uh, we will go live and we have some stories, uh, that I'm going to talk about, but like I said, as always, if you have story ideas or if you have topics that you would like me to look into and discuss on these videos, uh, or on a fork full of noodles or what have you, um, <clears throat> please leave a comment, uh, send me an email, shoot me a message on the page or something like that. Because um, there are certain days where I kind of sit there and go, I don't fucking, what am I going to talk about today? Everybody just keeps talking about this virus and how every, everything's awful and terrible all the time. Like, there's got to be some other stories and ideas and thoughts floating around, right? And it's like, no, there isn't. So if I'm missing something, you, you know, please feel free to to get a hold of me. Anyway, um, so storytelling tomorrow, Sunday, we're going to go live uh, around noonish is sort of the plan. Um, that's that's sort of the idea that I have is to go live around noonish uh, with some of these uh, some, some some of these videos that have that, that I'm doing. Um, so uh, if if you are around Sunday afternoon, I would love it if you guys joined me on on the old Facebooks, um, and then it'll be a live replay on on the YouTubes uh, and on the podcast version, the audio podcast version as well. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I'll be there. And once again, if you want to financially help, or most of my albums are free anyway, you know, it, they're, they're avail most of them are available for free uh, or pay, pay what you want kind of a thing uh, on, on my Bandcamp page. Uh, but you can go to my website to, to, to see all the videos, to, to make any donations if you can, to download all my comedy albums and see all my comedy videos um get, get ramen noodles comedy.com it's r-a-m-a-n noodles comedy.com all right folks uh i think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna end the video here thank you guys so much for for tuning in checking out this thing um uh and uh, we'll we'll see you tomorrow so see you on the road <laughs>